Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah of Hannah B Reads, and in this video I'm going to talk about all the books that are on my TBR for the month of June. I have 10 books here that I want to talk about, and I'm just going to go through them quickly, just talk a little bit about why they're on this list, and then we'll wrap it up. So, first thing on this list, and this is the one book that I know I will be picking up this month, is Ally Smith's Summer. This is the final book in her seasonal quartet, and this was published I think last year. So I'm a little bit behind on, on getting to this. But if you're not familiar with the quartet, Ali Smith published four books, starting with Autumn and then working through each season. She published a book tying events happening in the UK and in the world into the narrative that she wrote for each of these books. So Autumn focused heavily on the Brexit vote. Winter was focused on something else. Spring was focused on something else. And then Summer is going to end. And this was published in 2020. So you can kind of speculate on what might be in play here. It, I don't know that much about it. I know I think there's a family and there's some family drama in it. And that's all I know and that's all I want to know. I really want to go into this blind. So I'm hoping I get on with this. Spring was my favorite of the quartet when I read all three. I read Winter and Spring this year. I read Fall a year or two back now. I think a year, a year ago. Winter I kind of liked and the more I separated myself from it and kind of reflected on it the more it grew on me but Spring I absolutely loved. So I'm hoping Summer it finishes the quartet strong and I really love Summer too. So definitely picking this one up in June probably near the end of the month when Summer is actually here like officially because of the solstice but yeah definitely want to get to this one. Next on my list is The Magician's Assistant by Ann Patchett. Now I have never read any Ann Patchett before I have always wanted to. I own this, I own Commonwealth, I've got The Dutch House and Bel Canto on my list on Goodreads that I want to eventually track down, but I've just never spent like never spent the time trying to find the right book of hers to start with. But this one I've really been eyeing for the last few months and it just kind of kept falling back on my list, but now I really am hoping this is the month that I get to it. So this follows a woman named Sabine and Sabine has been her husband who is a magician. She's been his assistant for 20 years and near the start of this book her husband dies and she finds out that he's left a kind of second life and a lot of loose ends behind and she now has to sort through these loose ends and come to terms with the secondary life that her husband might have been leading behind her back and she kind of has to deal with what that means and and how she's going to kind of move on from it. So yeah, I'm really intrigued by this one. I'm really hoping that I get on with it because it just sounds so interesting to me. We'll see. Hopefully Ann Patch will be an, a new favorite author. After that, we have more of a newer release. This is Matt Haig's The Midnight Library. So I picked this up, I think a month or two ago, just in a random book buying splurge. And uh, this is a book that's been around booktube quite a bit as of late. So I don't feel like I need to spend too much time talking about it in this. The whole premise is that when you die, you are sent to this library and in this library you can see how you might have made different choices in your life and how those choices would have affected your uh, life moving forward. So you can kind of explore all the what ifs that you might think about in your regular life. So you follow a woman named Nora who ends up in this library somehow and I think something happens where she puts this library at risk and it might cease to exist and she has to save save the day I guess. So again really intrigued by this, heard really great things. I really love this cover. This color scheme is just so great I think. Um, but I've also never read any Matt Haig before. How to Stop Time has been on my list for a long time too. So if I get on with this I'll definitely have to move his other stuff up up to the top of my TBR. So the next three books that I want to talk about, these are ones that have been on my TBR, my, on my like physical TBR shelf for many years now. And I've been trying to make an effort this year to prioritizing reading stuff that I've had in my possession for a really long time that I haven't read yet. Because at this point, they're just taking up space on my shelf. And I've clearly held on to them. I've done so many unhauls that these ones for some reason stick around so I just need to read them and get rid of them or read them and then feel better about keeping them. And the first of those is The Astronaut's Wives Club by Lily Koppel. Now this is a nonfiction book. I think I picked this up just on a whim at Barnes & Noble years back. I was really intrigued by 
looking at the wives in particular because I feel like there's always so much em emphasis put on the astronauts themselves. These particular women are focusing on the Mercury 7. Um, the wives of the Mercury 7 who were the first astronauts sent out into space. I don't know anything really else about that other than the fact that it is true, it's nonfiction, and it examines all of these women and kind of this stardom they, that was thrust upon them because their husbands were doing these, in, you know, they were going into space. So I'm really intrigued to see how in-depth this goes. I'm curious if there's like interviews with these women or if it's all anecdotal evidence. I'm I'm really gonna be interested to see kind of how how this works and apparently this was adapted into a television series i did go and look it up it ran on abc for i think a half season and it must have been canceled so that's number one number two on this trio is the shadow queen a novel of wallace simpson duchess of windsor by rebecca dean now this was a book that i don't know when i picked this up this might have been another just like random buy at barnes and noble which i am very apt to do <laughs> um and this follows the life of Wallace Simpson up to the point when she meets Edward. So if you're not familiar with who Wallace Simpson is, she's an American who Edward fell in love with. He was the royal. He abdicated the throne to be with her. If you've seen The Crown, you know all of this. This looks at Wallace Simpson's early life. So I'm really kind of intrigued. This is a novelization, obviously. So it's a lot of speculation and, and drama added and things. But I'm curious to see how Rebecca Dean, Rebecca Dean, I'm sorry, puts her own spin on this because for so much of what Wallace, you know about her, you hear a lot about af of her when she was with Edward. And I don't necessarily think that we get a lot of look into her before that. She had a lot of marriages. I know that there was uh, some abusive situations. So I'm curious to see kind of how, how Rebecca Dean does this. I did read another novel by Rebecca Dean a few years back. She wrote a book called The Palace Circle. And that one, I I didn't mind her writing style. I didn't love the characters uh, or the storyline, I should say. The characters kind of got a little grating after a while. So I'll be curious to see if this runs into those same problems or if I'll get on with this book much better. And the final book in this trilogy is uh, the trio, not trilogy. This is To Be Queen by Christy English, a novel of the early life of Eleanor of Aquitaine. So again, novelization of a real figure. Eleanor of Aquitaine was an early queen of England. She was considered one of the most famous early queens um, to rule. And there is a lot of speculation behind her, a lot of, I don't want to say mythology, but a lot of legends, I guess, behind her. So this is a novelization of her early life. I don't know anything more about it than that. I've never seen this book talked about anywhere. I haven't even looked at the reviews on Goodreads again. So we'll see how I get on with it. I have no idea. I don't really know that much about Eleanor of Aquitaine, really. She's a figure that I've always wanted to learn more about. So maybe this will uh, spur me to pick up some actual nonfiction biographies or something about her. Then we have This is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a YA thriller that's been on my shelf for a very long time too. Not quite as long as the others though. I think I first saw this on booktube somewhere. I want to say that Hannah of a Clockwork Reader had this on a video a long time ago and I thought it was sounded intriguing so I think I grabbed a copy from Book Outlet or something. This follows a man who has a radio show and he does some like true crime stuff and he gets a call that he should look into this missing girl named Sadie. And he finds out that her disappearance has some interesting things tied to it, some interesting mystery, and I think he goes after to try to find, find Sadie and find out what, what happened to her. The other really cool thing about this book that I'm really intrigued by is part of it is told through transcripts of the podcast that West, the main character, runs, I believe. So you see, in, you have like interviews and stuff, and I really love when books take that approach, when they don't necessarily write straight narrative and they use kind of transcripts or, or letters or what have you. So really intrigued to see what that is. This is also not that long, I think, where it's, it's maybe 300 pages. So... Yeah, 308. So this will be a really quick kind of read. And I haven't read a YA thriller in a very long time. So I'm hoping that maybe this will be a good one that I, that'll kind of get me back in the thriller vibes. Another book that uh, has been far on my TBR for far too long. This is Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. This is a novel that follows a couple through about 25 years of their relationship. I've heard this compared to Sally Rooney in some ways in that it's a really good reflection of relationships between characters, between people, and kind of the conflict that arises from that and, and all of that. Sally Rooney is one of my favorite authors, so I have high hopes that 
this compares. It's a little bit of a thicker book compared to the others on the list and I'm really I'm really intrigued though. I've I'm in love with this cover so I'm really hoping to get on the, with the book just because I really want to keep this cover on my shelf but we'll see. We'll see how it, how it goes. Two books left. We're almost there. The next one is actually not a novel but a poetry collection. Now I have been trying to read at least one poetry collection every month because I found that I don't read enough poetry and I really want to find some poets that I connect with. I've had not so great luck with the collections that I've read recently in that I just haven't I they've been interesting and they're not bad but I just haven't connected with them in the way that I've hoped to. So this month we're going to give Alone with Other People by Gabby Bess a try. Now this was a book that I was recommended on Jen Campbell's channel I believe a while back. All of my poetry recs really come from Jen because she's so knowledgeable of poetry and if you haven't checked out her channel on booktube you definitely should because she's just a delight. She's lovely. This one she featured I think in a, a haul that she did and I don't know anything about it other than the fact that I'm assuming it's going to explore loneliness and relationships and friendships and what it means to be alone. So I don't know I really love this cover too this kind of blurred out photo. So yeah see how I get on on with that. I really don't have any much anything more to say about it because I, I just don't know. And then finally, the last book in my June TBR pile is Our Women on the Ground, Essays by Arab Women Reporting from the Arab World. This was published, I believe, now I have to check. This was published in 2019, so it came out a couple of years ago now. And this is a focus on, as it says on the tin, various Arab women who are journalists working in the Arab world in the Middle East and it examines their experiences working in these these places. I've heard really really great things about this collection and I just love, I, as somebody with a journalism background, I went to school for journalism so that's where my, my expertise lies. I've always had immense respect for the news and reporting and the amount of work that goes into it. So this I have really high hopes for. Definitely plan on getting to this at some point in the month. And I'm hoping that it's, I'm just hoping that it kind of opens my eyes to some new things and, and gives me a new understanding of what it means to be a reporter in that part of the world. So that wraps up my June TBR. I'm really glad that you stayed and watched. Thanks for hanging out. Do let me know down below in the comments what you plan on picking up in June. Have you read anything in my list? Any recommendations from where I should start? Please do let me know. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. See you around. Bye.